David Koresh never became a rock star. But the author of Madman in Waco says before wanting to be the son of God, it was his dream. I just happened to have a cassette here of my band, a new song that we've written. If you like it, maybe you could share it. In the 90s, Bob Darden wrote a column for Billboard magazine, an industry in Koresh tried to latch on to. But even back then, this drummer knew the beat Koresh was marching to wasn't a good one. Go out there and jam with this strange guy? No. A strange guy, but one who in 51 days changed the world view of Waco. The bad news, it just happened to be near Waco, but it's not a Waco story. The story takes place about 15 miles away at Mount Carmel, the Branch Davidian compound the cult leader and his followers called home. On February 28, 1993, federal agents planned to raid the facility for illegal weapons. Did the Waco ask for the FBI and the ATF? The only thing where it's fair that Waco gets blamed is that the local authority, as many of them, had turned a blind eye to Chris. But people do that all over the country. It just happened to be this guy had dreams of being a, a messiah with a, a bloody auto de fe at the end. Let's start at the beginning. <laughs> Koresh's real name was Vernon Howell, a high school dropout who hitched a ride to Waco in the 1980s and joined up with the Branch Davidians, an offshoot of the Davidians who branched away from the Seventh-day Adventist church in the 1930s and settled in an area that's now a Waco residential neighborhood. Here's Hadif again. Darden, now a journalism professor at Baylor University, is considered an expert on the group's history and says Waco was chosen at random, but was known for its tolerance at the time. We generally leave people alone, for good or bad. Be according to the book. In the late 1950s, the group moved to a rural area. And there, after a violent takeover, Koresh replaced leader George Rodin and he and his remaining followers, now known as the Koreshians, were left alone for years until one rainy Sunday, which marked the start of one of the longest standoffs in American history. In May of 1992, a box of grenade casings addressed to the cult broke open on a UPS loading dock, launching the federal investigation into the group's use of illegal guns and explosives. That, coupled with reports of child abuse, as Koresh took wives as young as 11, led to the deadly siege nine months later. From my understanding, that calls for a reevaluation of how they handle these sort of things. And we haven't had anything quite like that in this country since. Following the botched raid on the compound, which left four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians dead, a media frenzy ensued. This was as big a story as OJ and the Bronco or, or Watergate and the public's fascination with it didn't abate. Fascination fueled by a series of decisions by federal authorities to try to convince and force the people inside to come out. <laughs> FBI agents tried psychological tactics such as blasting music and shining lights at the compound, cutting off all power, and more aggressive moves like puncturing holes in the building with tanks and trying to gas them out. Determining factor, people should be coming out why you use a tank to punch holes in a place when you know they're running propane lamps to keep it warm. That's the kind of thing those guys who made those decisions will have to live with. On April 19th, 76 people, including more than 20 children, were killed after the compound caught fire, ending the 51-day siege. When children are involved, it's always better to err on the side of caution, and nobody did until this thing blew up. Darden says after speaking to survivors, law enforcement, medical examiners, and more, both sides are to blame. We didn't find many heroes. But he's sure of two things. The ATF agents killed while following orders were heroes. And while there's still controversy over how the fire started, Koresh could have saved his followers. But the sinful Messiah's ego to fulfill his own prophecy was too great. FBI, which clearly has learned from this, made terrible mistakes. The people who followed Koresh made terrible mistakes. So there'll be no excuses. Koresh was not a good man. He did not have his people's best interest in heart.